Social Animal Contract Theory I Make the Zoo Earn Millions Per Month Introduction Recruitment Notice In order to meet the expanding business needs of the Royal Zoo, we are currently recruiting various types of employees for a long time. The job requirements are as follows. Job Responsibilities 1. Show the beauty of wildness and provide viewing services for tourists. 2. Make good use of the power of wildness to provide transportation services for tourists. 3. Release the flavor of wildness and provide catering services for tourists. 4. 1. The Ben Bridge is about to fall down. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Aki, to be honest with you, you have obtained the authority to sign the Animal Treaty. Next, the task of saving the economy of Jinhua country, maintaining the ecological environment of the world, and defending cosmic peace will be entrusted to you. Arthur is walking on the big stupid bridge. He just failed the interview and has nowhere to go. He didn't hear clearly what the bald half-old man wearing a yellow white coat was saying, with a pair of broken glasses crooked on his nose bridge just now. He just wants to avoid baldness and continue on his own path. Aki. Listen to me, don't leave. Are you talking to me? Arthur was stuck in his bald position and had to stop to accept his challenge. Of course, you're so, so, handsome. Who are you? Arthur could only smile admittedly, but he still wanted to clarify. But my name is not Aki, I'm sorry. After Arthur dropped this sentence, he first swayed to the left and then fiercely stabbed to the right, breaking through half of his position and highlighting a path of escape. This road is on the Big Ben Bridge. The Ben Bridge is about to fall, 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 a few children were singing this classic that has been passed down for thousands of years while walking on the Big Stupid Bridge. Aki, listen to me. You have the ability to sing songs. If you don't follow my instructions, not only will the universe be destroyed, but even the big stupid bridge will fall down. The Big Ben Bridge stands in the center of Big Ben City, serving as the central axis of the city. At 10 o'clock in the morning when the sun has already begun to scorch her buttocks, it allows many donkey carts and trams to fill up many big men, causing traffic to jam on her. If the big stupid bridge falls, it's really big news. She's been around for thousands of years. Has she been around for tens of thousands of years? Countless. Arthur still wanted to avoid balding, so he tried to sprint and continue on his own path. A donkey in a donkey cart hissed behind Arthur. The bald man promptly extended one of the sleeves of his white coat, and another piece of withered vine extended from the sleeve. Cutting is a bald hand with a lack of moisture, cracked skin, long dot term exposure to unknown chemicals, and five fingers resembling dry branches. Kudo exerted a death wrap on Arthur's wrist and pulled him back. Arthur didn't expect such an old man to be so strong that he could hold on to him tightly. Okay, okay, let me go, okay. I don't have a job or money right now. I can't afford your martial arts secrets, even if it's two shillings, I can't afford a book. Arthur made no secret of it. No need for money, no need for money, and without a job, it would be even more suitable. If you don't have a job, I have one here. To punish evil, maintain peace, and defend the golden flower country. Wait, Arthur interrupted the bald man. You didn't just say you wanted to punish evil and corruption. I won't work overtime or pay extra. Who wants you to work overtime? Where are you going? The bald withered vine entwined Arthur's wrist tighter, and Arthur felt like he was about to twist his hand. How could it be so powerful? In short, you now have very powerful abilities. As long as the other party is willing, you can sign a livestock contract with anyone, allowing them to evolve and become a certain type of animal within a specified time to help you make money. What you said. Arthur couldn't resist the bald man and stood still, pondering the curved path to save the country. I don't know how to be the boss. What boss, you suddenly said, where have you gone? Who said you want to be the boss? You, as you just said, 
sign a contract and then, within the specified time, turn a person into an animal and help me make money. Yes, social animal husbandry. I have talked to them and they agree, and I also agree. You are allowed to open a livestock agreement, which is a privilege that has not been approved for 10,000 years. Up there. That's right, up there. The bald man was proud and used his index finger to draw a circle over his bald head. Above. Arthur could tell that he was a lunatic. Harley pressed, that's really gratifying. Sir, I'm glad you've reached the pinnacle of happiness. I'll turn around and deliver the silk and gold to the mansion, amen. Arthur reached out his other hand and tightly grasped the bald cutting, shaking hands with him. You're welcome, my name is Da Vinci, you don't need to call me, sir, dot. Okay, when she. Arthur's handshake made Da Vinci relax his guard. Taking this opportunity, he threw the withered vine away and ran away. The Ben Bridge is about to fall, fall, fall. Arthur's escape plan was blocked by another group of children singing songs, one by one like turtles who had just crawled out of their shells, blocking Arthur's path. Is it a school trip? Arthur softened his heart and did not venture into their array, and then cutting entangled him again. Want to leave? It's not that easy. Da Vinci wrapped his hands around Arthur this time and locked him with a lock. Take a closer look, the lock is snake-shaped, and the harder Arthur tries to break free, the tighter the lock becomes. Arthur had never seen such a thing before, and he began to be afraid. You just said, what abilities do I have? Are you not listening to anyone? Da Vinci was obviously very angry, and the few remaining hairs on his head stood up, almost burning. Knew you. Knew you. You can knew you someone else now. I don't like doing things like tying up appointments with others. Arthur frowned. I don't know how to be a boss either. Besides, didn't you say I wanted to save the Golden Flower Kingdom and maintain space peace? What's the relationship with that binding agreement? It's a livestock contract. The livestock contract. The livestock of the livestock. What exactly does that mean, and how can humans become animals? Pick it. Da Vinci was furious and turned Arthur's head, pointing to the tram on the road, which was crowded with people who were already late for work. Have you seen that tram? I see it. Where's the big guy in the car? I'm not blind. Very good, look at the people in that car. Although they all look like humans, you look carefully, look with your heart, lotus flowers bloom in your heart time and time again, look with scientific and dialectical materialism, open up your spiritual cover, release your fantasies, re-examine them, and look at them again. What does it look like? Arthur looked around and saw that while the tram was indeed dialectical materialism, the lotus flower in his heart bloomed again and again. Now the tram is already a canned sardine. Inside the can, people are not like people, and ghosts are not like ghosts. They are all sardine in the can. How can this happen? What causes people to become sardine? It's pressure. The surface pressure, of course, comes from the inner walls of the tram carriages, as well as the pressure generated by the hand-to-hand -hand combat between people inside the carriages. But there is a deeper level of pressure, and Arthur can see that kind of pressure. A stone weighing 1,000 gene is pressed on the head of sardine in the can, which is a shortcut for drying salted fish. The merchants who sell salted fish feel that relying solely on sunlight to exploit salted fish is still too slow. When the sun is not shining, they will press the sardine with extra big stones. If there is no big stone, they will use the house loan, the rent at the end of the month, the water and electricity bill of last month, the urging of the charterer, and the repayment date of the credit card, which are all excellent weights and can be replaced. Press these big stones on the sardine shoulders, and soon you can squeeze out water, drain your soul, and lose your dreams. The sardine in the cans of the tram will become salty fish. Sardine, good. You bet they are sardine. Now go to the car and ask them who is willing to sign the livestock contract with you to see if they will really become a sardine. 
Da Vinci proudly introduced that UU reading www.uukangshu.net did not notice Arthur's face turning pale. Mr. Wensi, you just said I can save the golden flower country. Even the universe is fine. Can I save Big Ben Bridge? The Ben Bridge is about to fall, 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 what are you doing? Do you think the big stupid bridge will really collapse? Don't worry, I just laughed. Da Vinci lifted the withered vine and gently stroked a few hairs on his bald head. It's not just a joke, when she. Look, big stupid bridge is really going to collapse. Pick it. Da Vinci cursed. Aki, what I'm talking to you about is serious. Don't digress from the topic. I didn't change the subject. That sardine can is too heavy and there are so many stones. What stone? Da Vinci's withered vines couldn't help but scratch their heads to express their doubts, unable to restrain their dying hair. Did you see anything unclean? What's not clean, stone? Big stone. That tram is loaded with a lot of stones, it's too heavy. Will the big stupid bridge not hold up? Do you have any illusions, Aki? Da Vinci sneered. Where are there any stones? The Ben Bridge is about to fall, 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 with a loud bang, a silence erupted. Arthur, Da Vinci, the singing elementary school students, the stagnant donkey cart and tram, and the men on board all shut up and opened their eyes wide. A black hole captured their line of sight. Just now, the tram carrying sardine and big rocks has disappeared, leaving only a black hole in its original position. The Ben Bridge has passed through a hole, and the tram has fallen off. 2. Catfish and Sardine You are listening at NovelFull.audio Hurry up and save people. Arthur, who has been procrastinating on his work, finally has vitality. Mr. Wensey, you stay here and guard. Don't let the children get close to that hole. I'll go find the phone booth. Arthur stood up and quickly blocked the children and adults who dared to come and watch the excitement, keeping them away from the black hole. Don't get close, don't get close. Hurry up and leave the Big Ben Bridge, I don't know if that hole will expand. Let's go, everyone. Arthur's call may not be entirely correct, he was just relying on his instinctual judgment in a short moment. Where is the phone booth? No need, Aki, please calm down. Hurry up and report to the Imperial Guards. Don't be so nervous, Aki, come and take a look. They're okay. Da Vinci waved his hand, gesturing for Arthur to go over. Like him, he lay on the edge of the black hole, poked his head out, and peered into the abyss. On the other end of the abyss is the flowing river of time, the mother river of each and every one of us in Big Ben City. Time River is mostly quiet, even though there was such a big commotion just now, she still remains quiet. She contained the concrete falling from the Big Ben Bridge and the tram full of sardine and big stones, but it was just a splash. Where are people? We've all swam to the shore, look over there. Arthur rubbed his eyes, unsure if what he saw was true. The windows of the tram were indeed open, but for some reason, all the passengers inside swam out in a short moment, all swimming to the shore unharmed. How could it be possible? Aki, you missed out this time. It's not me who missed it, it's the Benxiao who missed it. I mean the sardine below, you said impossible. In fact, it is possible. You just guessed that there is sardine on the tram, but in fact, there are catfish. Catfish. Fish. Arthur was completely confused. Haven't you read Soul magazine when you were young? The sardine in a cabin will die soon. So the boatman will put some catfish in the sardine's cabin, let the catfish go to drill, roll those sardine, and toss them around, so the sardine won't die so soon. Just now, there are catfish in this tram, which ensures their vitality, and also reduces the friction coefficient of the car windows and doors. You know what, catfish are slippery all around, very disgusting. Of course Arthur understands, he is the only one among the nobles who takes the tram. 
In the tram, one will always encounter those strong men covered in sweat, and in the wars that occupy space, they will encounter gods and kill gods. Because of these catfish, a can of fish has survived. Arthur, you missed them. Da Vinci carefully smoothed the hair on his head with withered vines. So, now that you have witnessed it with your own eyes, you should feel at ease and be able to accept my job. Wait a moment, I need to figure it out, Arthur took a deep breath and pulled his head back from the edge of the black hole, rolling his body out of that dangerous space. Those people have already wrung out their clothes on the shore, and they really look fine. Arthur turned his head again and looked behind him. The children happily continued to sing and walked away. Big Ben Bridge is about to fall. Stop singing. Arthur moaned bitterly. The other big men on the tram donkey cart shook their heads in disappointment and left, returning to the tram. They were going to be late, but their legs didn't want to swing. The Big Ben Bridge has collapsed, the news should be reported, and the officials from the Ministry of Personnel will also watch it. This should not be considered late. Yes, yes, it's not considered late. The big man in the car agreed to this plan and immediately returned to the car with peace of mind, exhausted. This time, not only the river of time, but also the Big Ben Bridge has returned to calm. Apart from that black hole, there is nothing different from usual. Do you think it's unbelievable? Da Vinci also stood up and walked over to Arthur's side. Aki, I am a scientist. What sets a scientist apart from ordinary people is that we look at things by clearing clouds and seeing the truth. Except for the yellowed white coat, Arthur couldn't see any possibility of a connection between the words Da Vinci and the scientist. You were so worried about the canned sardine just now because you were not confident. And you were not confident because you did not have enough insight to observe, did not detect the truth of things, and you were worrying about things that did not need to be worried about. That's human life, a car full of human life. But they are sardine, and you think so yourself. How could the fish drown? No, I'm just joking. How can people really be sardine? Or it's just a literary modification, foo bixing. I said I was a dog, but I just said I was like a dog, but I didn't mean I was really a dog. And what I mean is, from now on, you can make a person conditionally become a real dog. Arthur heard his head smoke, but he couldn't help but stick his head out and look down from the black hole. Open your eyes wide, it's not fish that fell into the water, it's people. But they really don't know why, they were able to swim ashore without a single leak in such a critical situation. Strange thing, how could this be? You must have poured a bucket of fish into the river like this, why not? Arthur ignored Da Vinci. Don't you believe it yet? Arthur still didn't respond. On this difficult ball, how many people say every day, I am a cow, I am a horse, I am a donkey. Even being a cat or a dog is better than being a person. Aki, go help them fulfill their wishes and save them. You mean those people were just turned into sardine by me? That's not the case. Don't think of yourself so great, Aki. De Wensi stood up and patted the dust on his white coat, still turning yellow. It's not just you who make them sardine, but other people you will meet in the future. Those cows and horses are not your business. To be exact, you just complete the last step of evolution, making a visual transformation of the efforts of predecessors, so that everyone can see the final results. To be more simple, you are the sixth cake to be full, but you can't say that only you can make people full. Do you understand, do you understand? Da Vinci walked to the center of the Big Ben Bridge, stood in the sunlight, stretched out his arms, and stood on a cross, welcoming the arrival of a new era. They are all willing to become animals, so you should enlighten them and guide them. An ocean-going ship is about to anchor, and you are the sole figure to ensure the survival of sardine on the ship. Ah Chi, the future of our golden flower country depends on you. Arthur doesn't think he can sail a ship, nor does he think there are many people in the golden flower parliament who want to become animals. I oppose this arrangement. You have no, cannot, objection. 
Da Vinci's hair stood up again. Tonight at the earliest, or tomorrow at the latest, someone will come to find you. This person is very noble, and no one in Jinhua Kingdom can resist her. Who? You will know then, she will arrange everything. At the earliest, next Monday, you will be going to work at the new company, using the skills I have given you. Arthur finally gave up resistance. The work of saving the economy of Jinhua country, maintaining the ecological environment of the world, and defending the peace of the universe should be able to have a holiday on Saturday and Sunday, right? Free Castle You are listening at NovelFull.audio Aki, being a person can't be like this. When looking for a job, how can you just ask others if they work overtime on weekends? No wonder you're still slacking off today and can't find a serious and stable job. Da Vinci stood up a branch in the withered vine, swaying left and right in the air, expressing his negation to Arthur. But you go back first, go home and wait for news. Da Vinci spoke as he untied the snake like handcuffs. As for Arthur, his muscle memory was awakened, and upon hearing the phrase, go home and wait for news, he was considered to have completed an interview. Oh, there shouldn't be any news when I go home. It scared me to death. I almost thought I was going to defend cosmic peace from today on. Arthur, who survived the disaster, also adapted to the fact that Big Ben Bridge had passed through a hole in the overall environment, and remained calm. Anyway, everyone is not surprised either. Arthur needs to hurry home. Coming down from the Big Ben Bridge, walking a few blocks, turning a corner, Arthur entered a circle. This circle is surrounded by Big Ben City, and most of the houses inside are wooden houses, even grass houses. This is different from the entire Big Ben City. The floor in the circle has not been paved with asphalt or neatly laid with bricks. What lay horizontally on the surface of the entire alley were dried dog droppings and possibly human droppings mixed in. Shit didn't do anything wrong. Lying on the road, it was crushed by passing donkey carts, or even the soles of its shoes or feet, spreading into a larger area. At first it looked like peanut butter, but later it dried and turned white, like powder brushed on a wall, which was really beautiful. The half sky in the circle is another scene. Electric wires are more complex and advanced than other parts of Big Ben City. The intertwining and intertwining have turned this place into an industrial spider hole. And on these wires, there are bed sheets, sheets, and long bell bottoms that people living nearby have washed and hung to dry. In the center of the circle, there is a stone castle with only two floors, standing in the wind with candles remaining. The castle is Arthur's home, and the circle is the territory that the Arthur family once owned. Now, the circle is the slums of Big Ben City. Walking through this circle, Arthur had to be careful not to step on landmines, avoid being entangled in industrial spider silk around his neck, and finally, avoid the Iron Knight who could be killed at any time at the corner of the street. Collecting waste, collecting glass bottles. Mouse medicine, cockroach medicine, ant medicine. Collect long hair, collect long hair, collect long hair. Collecting old color boxes, washing machines, water heaters, old typewriters. These iron knights appeared and disappeared, riding on two wheeled iron horses. Wherever they passed, they killed the baby upstairs who was already sleeping and cried loudly. But Arthur was born in circles and grew up in circles, so it's not too difficult to dodge all these deadly obstacles. He has arrived home. Like a dream, life is fragrant and heartbreaking, and I shed tears when facing falling flowers in the air. Inside the castle, there came a gentle and powerful voice from Ajia. Arthur knew it must be the maid Dolly who was once again cooking the movie from thirty years ago before playing the soul box. Has he Jashi died? Young master, you're back. In the performance box, Ji Yi Cho, holding the He family, cried bitterly. But Dolly didn't care about their life and death, so she jumped out of the tattered rotten chair, wrapped a ring around Arthur's neck, and then, like a big sister, touched Arthur's forehead. Are you hungry? I haven't felt it yet. How was the job search going? 
Um. I don't know how to put it, I met two workers today. Ha. Huh. Didn't you say it was just one family before leaving? It's a family, but there was an accident on the Big Ben Bridge. Arthur told Dolly about encountering Vinci on the Big Ben Bridge and about a hole that fell from the Big Ben Bridge. Did such a big thing happen? But it seems like everyone hasn't reacted much. Hijashi has already died, in the arms of Jie Chiu, whom he had let down. He died for the 8,736th time in the performance box of the castle. Dolly spewed the videotape out of the machine expressionlessly, put it away, and prepared to return it when she had time. If you see more, get used to it. Arthur couldn't distinguish for a moment what Dolly meant by, seeing too much. What's going on with your second job? Did the company suddenly ask you to go? No, it's not the company, it's the one she who inexplicably told me to start saving the economy of Jinhua country from next Monday, maintaining the ecological environment of the world, and defending the peace of the universe. Dolly's face is tomato. Dolly's face is an apple. Dolly's face is a red balloon. Dolly's face couldn't hold up anymore. Puhahaha. <laughs> Laughing so much. That terrible old man really said that. Did you agree to him? I asked if he wanted to work overtime on Saturday and Sunday, and he seemed very dissatisfied. How can we have weekends off to maintain peace in the universe? So even if you hire me, I won't do it. It's also great, young master. I don't want you to go outside every day, Dolly began rummaging through the cabinets, one empty and two empty, sighing. But I still don't want to, Dolly confirmed her thoughts again, adding. I don't want to either. Arthur lay down on the wicker chair, the performance box had already been closed, and his eyes were empty. Those passengers who fell into the river of time were really safe and sound. Check the news later, or newspapers like Moon and Time, there should be news. What do you want to eat? French fries dipped in mashed potatoes, your favorite, is that okay? Okay, I love it the most. Dolly closed the cabinet door and prepared to go out. She went to the courtyard of the castle to dig up the soil and see how many potatoes were buried inside. They were all planted by her, in order not to starve to death at such times. Collecting waste, collecting glass bottles. Mouse medicine, cockroach medicine, ant medicine. Collect long hair, collect long hair, collect long hair. Collecting old color boxes, washing machines, water heaters, old typewriters. Your Majesty the Queen has arrived, Your Majesty the Queen has arrived, you you reading www.uukangshu.net Your Majesty the Queen has arrived. What's going on? Arthur was so scared that he jumped out of the rocking wicker chair and looked around. Is the advertising slogan of waste collectors and sellers being so outrageous now? Ah. A scream came from the doorway, and Dolly was suppressed by someone. Arthur, who had not yet realized what was happening, was also suppressed in the next second. The person who suppresses them is a pile of canned goods, canned armor. The top of the armored can was adorned with bird hair, even less than the hair on da Vinci's head, only one. Kneel down. Your Majesty the Queen is here. The sky was approaching dusk, and a white moonlight that was even more dazzling than the setting sun shone into the castle, replacing the electric light. Congratulations, Queen of the Golden Flower Kingdom, Your Majesty Doria. The armored cans with bird feathers on their heads lined up in two columns, and the leader shouted in a muffled voice inside the cans. My king, long live, long live, long live. Arthur and Dolly were held down and shouted, long live. Flat, Arthur Ching. At this moment, Arthur dared to lift his head, while Dolly remained in a kneeling position. Bai Yueguang said, to make a long story short, Arthur Ching, I have learned a lot about you. You are very suitable, Arthur Ching. Arthur knelt straight and didn't know what to say, because he didn't know what exactly suited him. I have a job for you here. Is it difficult or not? Is it to save the economy of the Golden Flower Country, maintain the ecological environment of the world, 
and defend the peace of the universe. Bai Yueguang frowned for a moment, then couldn't help but laugh, revealing a more dazzling white light. I'm just here to appoint you as the director of the Royal Zoo. Where did you hear about the rest, or did you add it yourself? For The Way of Hospitality You are listening at NovelFull.audio That white moonlight is the queen of our golden flower kingdom, your majesty Doria. Arthur has never seen the queen, at least not with his own eyes. He is just a baron and his family is in decline. When the queen's skin, as white as sheep fat, appeared in Arthur's stone castle, Arthur and Dolly confirmed that she was Her Majesty herself. In the kingdom of Golden Flower, even with a solar flashlight, you couldn't find a second person like her. Doria didn't wear her usual luxurious attire, so she should have acted in a low dot key manner. Wearing a black dress, she revealed her curves closely. And the black fabric contrasts her snowy skin more like frost on the ground. Arthur Ching, although I have reviewed your information, I still want to get to know you better in person and have a conversation. Arthur was at a loss, a person of his level didn't know how to talk to the king. Don't be so reserved, just like you usually do. Eat. Yes, have you eaten? Me. I'll have a simple meal here today. Maid, go cook now. This is really worrying. There was not much food in the castle originally and dipping french fries in mashed potatoes was not enough for so many people to eat. A few lettuce were cut yesterday, and the chicken was still in the egg. There was really no food to entertain guests. Young master, do you want to activate the warning? Kai. Level 3. Obey me. Young master. Dolly's maid received approval and immediately began to take action. Your master-servant relationship is quite good. His Majesty Doria sat on the wicker chair brought to her by the tin can, looking enviously at the busy dolly. She is such a useful subordinate. Moreover, Doria could see that their spiritual connection was definitely not limited to the relationship between master and servant. Arthur Ching, is your maid also your wife? No, Arthur replied as dolly was busy in the kitchen and didn't hear her. Is your maid also your sister? The kind without blood ties, but with better emotions. Doria couldn't help but sit straighter than before, and her eyebrows twitched unnoticed. She envies Arthur and also envies Dolly. The relationship between Arthur and Dolly is certainly not something Doria can envy. Today, more than twenty years ago, in this castle, Arthur and Dolly were born almost simultaneously. One is from the Baroness's belly, and the other is from the maid's belly. In the same room, Dolly was a few minutes faster, so she looked like a sister. They live in this stone castle, and until now, only the two of them are left. Why are you still guarding this place? Where else can I be if I'm not here? I know this is your fiefdom, it seems to have been a thousand years, as it is written in the scriptures. Maybe, the old man hasn't had a chance to say these things yet. What's wrong with so many wooden houses outside? It seems like Grandpa Tai, or Grandpa Madam, said that Big Ben City always needs to leave some places for the poor to live in. So far, this place has not been converted into even a stone house. There are also many stones in the wooden house, enough. It's inexplicable. Someone once said that Wei Chen always sees strange stones that no one else can see. Stone. The stone was not a concern for Queen Doria, and she did not continue to inquire about it. During the Q.A. with the Queen, Arthur gradually regained his tense mood. At the same time, there was also noise coming from the kitchen. Dolly came out of the kitchen and knelt down with a thud in front of His Majesty Doria. Your Majesty's visit is unknown. There is no stored grain in the castle. Maid, if I come here and can help you prepare dinner, I will naturally earn points. No matter what you bring out, I will not blame you. Your Majesty, thank you. Dolly stood up, keeping herself facing His Majesty, and quickly retreated in small steps. After retreating three meters, she turned around and quickly left, continuing to fuss in the kitchen. 
In no time, she successfully greeted her young master and his majesty the king, and sat together at the table in the castle. Is this what you commoners eat? The queen frowned and lifted the contents of the plate with a fork. That's probably noodles, but definitely not noodles. It's cotton, cotton. This continuous string is wrapped in two sections of hard plastic. The queen recognized that this was clearly a shoelace. What do you call this dish here, noodle? Non-noodle, dot. After all, the queen is knowledgeable and wise. Even in the face of lower-class nobles like Arthur, she should not lose the grace and gentleness that a queen should possess. She continued to smash the grey-black steak with her fork. With the experience of noodles not noodles, the queen knew that this thing might not be a steak. The fork hits the body of the steak, cuts a piece, inserts it with the fork, and raises it to the side of the nose. A strong industrial atmosphere rushed towards us, not additives, nor high dot tech, but the taste of industry. Intense, pungent, suffocating, it's a sticky smell. Your Majesty, the Imperial Physician has instructed. I have a score. The Queen already knew that it was a leather shoe. More precisely, it is the upper of a leather shoe, a relatively complete piece of cowhide. Can leather shoes also be eaten? Although the queen said so, she actually stuffed the piece of leather shoes into her mouth, frowned, and started chewing. Your Majesty. I have a score. Although it was difficult, the queen's cherry mouth was able to chew up that steak and swallow it. It seems to be genuine leather, did you buy these shoes for a lot of money? I don't know, you you reading www.uukangshu.net is not something we bought ourselves. The person who delivered it said it was genuine leather, and Wei Chen has always cherished it. Arthur looked up at the queen with embarrassment and lowered his head. Bold. You want to die, right? The emperor was not in a hurry, and the eunuch was in a hurry. The captain of the tin can once again pressed Arthur and Dolly's heads onto the floor. Stop. The queen stopped them. I've already said, I have points. The queen changed her previously friendly demeanor and suddenly looked like a lion, as if she was about to swallow the entire imperial army. Your Majesty. Get out. In the stone castle, soon there were only three people left. The queen stared at Dolly, and Arthur immediately said, Dolly is the maid here. If she goes out, I really don't know what to treat your majesty with. The queen slightly restrained herself and her eyebrows relaxed again. Arthur Ching, I didn't expect you to give me such a big surprise. Surprised. Happy. Arthur and Dolly looked at each other, trying to figure out what the queen meant by these words. Is it difficult? The queen of the Golden Flower Kingdom actually likes to eat leather shoes. I never thought there would be such poor nobles in my court, that's great. The queen's praise embarrassed Arthur. Poverty was not what he thought, but why did the queen still boast? The royal zoo can only be handed over to you. Leave it to me. The zoo. By the way, Arthur remembered that before dinner, his majesty had said so, asking him to become the director of the royal zoo. I don't understand, Arthur replied shamelessly. Why me? Because only you, a poor person like you, can break free from the control of the milk party and the lemon party and become my true vassal. It's you, Arthur Ching. Starting from next Monday, you will go to the zoo to work and not be allowed to disobey your orders. 5. Queen's Secret Order You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Arthur and Dolly remembered that the last time they went to the zoo was 15 years ago. At that time, they were still children. After playing happily for a day, they all agreed that it would be nice to work in the zoo when they grew up, if possible. The reason, of course, is that we can go to the zoo every day. Every morning when we arrive at the zoo, we ride a donkey-pulled feed cart, pull vegetarian food first, walk through the herbivorous animal area, feed deer, hippopotamuses, and elephants. Then get into the donkey cart, go to the carnivorous animal area, push the donkey that has just pulled the feed cart out of the car, feed the tiger, 
and feed the lion. Of course, this is just a childhood fantasy, just like becoming a doctor or a lawyer, it is just a dream casually mentioned. They don't have to wait to grow up, they have already abandoned. I don't understand anything, how can I be the zoo director for no reason? You don't need to understand. Queen Doria was resolute. Managing so many animals in a zoo definitely requires a lot of professional knowledge, right? I have never learned these before. Plus. Arthur Ching. The queen interrupted Arthur. When the sage created a problem, he must have created three solutions for it at the same time. I don't like to hear any courtiers explain difficulties to me, do you understand? The queen's tone is certainly still gentle, but this tenderness is incredibly harsh, making it impossible and impossible to refuse. Arthur couldn't understand the reason behind this. Even though Queen Doria is the beloved queen of our golden flower kingdom, why is this happening? On Monday, you will go to the zoo to fulfill your duties. It's the royal zoo, so don't go to the wrong place. In fact, it won't go wrong. There is only one zoo left in the current Big Ben city. The current situation of the zoo will naturally become known to you after you join. I will only tell you my requirements now, Arthur Cheen. The Queen cannot allow Arthur to share, and has already recognized Arthur as the zoo director. Within three years, the zoo's monthly profit will be increased to ten million pounds. Ten million. Is the profit of the zoo only this small? Arthur didn't take it lightly and was about to agree when he was interrupted. That's impossible. The maid Dolly protested loudly, disregarding the Queen's authority. How could a zoo's monthly profit possibly reach ten million pounds? In such an era, it would be good if the zoo could make money. Maid. Queen Doria twisted her waist and turned her moonlight like face towards the maid. At that moment, Doria suddenly realized that although Dory's maid skin was not as delicate as hers, she did not lose much. A faint layer of oil, like a thin layer of wax, condensed on Dolly's face, which was obviously caused by her constant need to cook. If a maid doesn't have to cook, would she be even whiter than a queen? Doria suddenly forgot what she was supposed to say and froze in the wicker chair. Your Majesty, what are your instructions? Do you have a unique perspective on the management of zoos? I dare not. However, what the grassroots just said should be a common sense that can be easily inferred. Maid. Doria's eyes became sharp, but no one except Dolly noticed. Arthur, he was still foolishly listening to the confrontation between the two women, without any sense of crisis. I can tell that Arthur Cheen will be very dependent on you. Grass people have been responsible for taking care of young masters since childhood and have never been negligent. That's good, maid. Doria seemed to have achieved a satisfactory result. Maid, you must remember this point. You are a nanny, you are a maid. Take good care of your young master, don't let him make any mistakes, you are the same. Don't be a bit presumptuous. Only the queen is obedient to the common people. Okay. Doria smiled smugly, realizing that her teeth were even whiter than her skin, probably because of the red lips as a backdrop. After eating that kind of cowhide, I couldn't even find any black between my teeth. Arthur Ching, there's no need to look for a job anymore. I work as a zoo director, working from nine to six, weekends off, and enjoy benefits from the Royal Retirement Board. What? Arthur exclaimed, and although Dolly knew that this job was definitely not as light as the Queen claimed, when the words, nine to six, weekends, and royal retirement service, came out, no one could stop Arthur from applying for this job. I'll go to work next Monday. That's settled, then. The Queen was proud and finally stood up, with the noodles and steak on the table almost untouched. But your majesty, one more question is. Dolly, can she also work at the zoo? The queen glanced at the plate and sat down again, rolling up the noodles with a fork. Maid. The queen looked at Dolly again and did not immediately answer Arthur's question. You are absolutely loyal to your young master, right? 
Of course. I don't know why you made such a dish while entertaining the queen. Are you sure you're really helping your lord? Do you know that, not to mention other kings, anyone who is a higher class noblewoman, if treated unfairly by a little maid like you? What's wrong? Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net shoelaces and leather shoes. Don't think that the Industrial Revolution is over. Without the guillotine, those young masters won't be able to make your lord die, your majesty, there are many people who eat grass or even soil in today's golden flower kingdom. It is not surprising that the nobles and adults see us grass people eating grass. In addition, your majesty just said that it is okay to eat grass in peacetime, so the grass people think your majesty wants to experience it. Eating grass is normal, and even the nobles know it. Doria unexpectedly obtained additional intelligence, secretly thinking that this trip was not a waste. Dolly knelt down and said. Furthermore, the young master is the young master, who is a servant of the common people, and the lord of the common people has always been the king of our golden flower kingdom, your majesty the queen. Very good. The queen heard Dolly's second half of the sentence and showed a satisfied smile she had never seen before throughout the night, dispelling all the previous displeasure. Arthur Ching, now that you are the director of the zoo, I will not interfere with the specific operation of the zoo. You can hire anyone or purchase any animal, including your maid. Do you understand? Yes. Although it's asking you to make the zoo profitable in three years, after a week, you need to produce a report telling me what you plan to do. Is that okay? No problem. Maid, take good care of your young master. Yes. Thus, the maid Dolly finally completed the first round of confrontation with Queen Doria. It wasn't until the last imperial guard left the stone castle that Dolly dared to breathe a sigh of relief. At this moment, she realized that her legs had already been weak and she was completely paralyzed on the slate. And Arthur, unaware of this, was still foolishly regretting himself for not asking the queen how much the zoo director's monthly salary was. 6. The First Livestock Contract You are listening at NovelFull.audio Inexplicably, I had three job interviews today. Arthur collapsed on a wicker chair, still carrying the fragrance of his majesty. The first one was to screw at the big lemon screw factory, everything else was fine. When Arthur asked if he wanted to work overtime, he was called home and waited for notification. The second one, on the Big Ben Bridge, Da Vinci asked him to save the economy of Golden Flower Country, maintain the ecology of the world, and defend the peace of the universe. Just like the previous one, there are probably no weekends. The third one, upon returning to the castle, His Majesty Queen Doria appointed him as the director of the Royal Zoo and the interview was successful. Arthur has found a job. No, Arthur has been found a job. Don't be too happy too early, Master Arthur. Dolly could always see through what Arthur was thinking. Think about it carefully, there's no such coincidence in the world. You had an accident today. How could the big stupid bridge collapse? Yes, the Big Ben Bridge has collapsed. Although it's just a small piece. Arthur hurriedly opened the performance box and searched through all channels, but still couldn't find any news about the hole in Big Ben Bridge. Sister Dolly, have I been tricked? Are we all living in a routine? Dolly was tidying up the aftermath of the dinner while also tidying up the chaos in Arthur's mind. Think carefully, the person who asked you to maintain peace in the universe must have told you something else. Eh, Arthur asked inexplicably. How did you know? Otherwise, how could he casually find someone on the street to maintain cosmic peace? Do you think you are the protagonist of the novel? Come on, what else did that person tell you? He also told me that I could sign a livestock contract with others, allowing humans to evolve and become animals. What? What? Young master, you just said it too quickly, I didn't hear it clearly. I can make people evolve, evolve. I can't remember what kind of social type, animal husbandry, or animal, Arthur said, but the more he said these words, the less confident he became. 
who would understand this? Animal. Creature. Oh, it's an animal. That person means, maybe it means I can turn a person into an animal at a specific time. Dolly, do you want to give it a try? Arthur didn't think Dolly would agree, nor did he believe that there would be such abilities in the world. He was just joking. Sure. Arthur made another mistake. Young master, have I ever rejected you? At the moment Dolly finished speaking, Arthur felt as if someone had suddenly stuffed a flyer into his fingers for some reason. In the castle, there was clearly no one else besides him and Dolly. Arthur placed his hand on the table and a thin yet thick piece of paper was taken out. The Livestock Covenant Young master, where did you get this thing from? I don't know either. Arthur knew that such words would not be convincing, so he had to grit his teeth and read the content written on that piece of paper. Animal Treaty Dolly, the contractor, has entered into a contract with Arthur and promises to meet the following requirements from now on. Firstly, every Monday to Friday, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., become an employee of Arthur, obey any work arrangements of Arthur, and have no objections. Midway from 12.00 to 1.30 is the rest time, and you can enjoy lunch, but you should always be ready for dispatch. Secondly, during the above working hours, based on work needs and personal characteristics, transform into a known animal in the world until the end of working hours. If there are additional requirements, the contractor can apply for an extension of the incarnation time. Thirdly, during the incarnation period, the physical functions of the contracting party will be specially strengthened according to work needs and their own situation. Fourthly, during the above working hours, all economic benefits obtained by the contractor from the work arranged by Arthur shall belong to Arthur. Fifthly, the contractor can receive the remuneration for the previous month's work at the beginning of each month, with a salary of zero pounds per month. Signature of the Contractor what a devil! Arthur couldn't help but feel remorseful, how could he really take what da Vinci said seriously? Leaving aside the discussion of how he came up with this livestock contract out of thin air, let's just look at this content. Looking horizontally and vertically, and diagonally, it's all a labor contract, and it's a labor contract without salary. What is the significance of such things? But young master, look here, during working hours, transform into some kind of animal. Do you mean that person gave you the ability to turn a person into an animal? Young master, as long as someone signs this contract with you, you can turn that person into an animal and he uses the animal's body to help you work, is that what you mean? Hey! Arthur scratched his head and scanned the animal covenant up and down several times, as if he could indeed understand it this way. If the queen hadn't been here before, I couldn't even think of the use of such superpowers. But why so coincidentally, it happened to be today that Her Majesty the Queen asked you to become the zoo director. Dolly muttered, as she picked up a quill, dipped it in ink, and solemnly wrote on the last line. Dolly. Young master, what animal do you want me to become? Is it a rabbit? Is it a cat? Or? I certainly don't want you to become your animal. Why do you want to? Ah, 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 you don't really sign. Arthur just reacted. Yu Yu read www.yuyukangshu.net, but Dolly has quickly dropped her pen, hid the animal treaty behind her, and smiled at him mischievously. CC, hashtag carrot. Carrot hashtag, I don't know if Dolly signed or not, but she hasn't changed anything. She hasn't become a rabbit or a cat, nothing has changed. She's still Dolly. Ha! Huh. There's no medicine to save me either. I actually believe this kind of ghost thing, how could it be true? It's okay, it's okay. Arthur breathed a sigh of relief, his Dolly was still Dolly. Not necessarily, it's already off work now. Look, it's already past seven o'clock. Dolly pointed to the clock, which was indeed a possibility. Maybe it really has to be during working hours to change. Dolly was making more possible assumptions. But to determine this possibility, the earliest we can do is wait for Monday morning. 
On Monday morning, Arthur will be the director of the Royal Zoo. The Queen said he should submit the plan report within a week, but he has no idea. But, as for him, the worst would be just like this now. Isn't it such a coincidence? A crazy scientist gave me the ability to turn people into dogs, and then I used this ability to run a zoo. And the Big Ben Bridge also fell down, although it was just a small piece. This kind of thing hasn't happened in 10,000 years, has it? I haven't heard of it before. Is it possible for this kind of thing to happen? Hey, where's that livestock contract? Arthur wanted to confirm the nonsensical contract again, but for some reason, it's gone. Sister Dolly, you probably didn't actually sign that thing, did you? Arthur asked anxiously, confirming again. What do you think? Dolly laughed and teased him. Forget it, look at the newspaper. Arthur casually opened a copy of Moon, but he still felt a bit uneasy. The people who fell off the Big Ben Bridge today should really be okay, right? 7. Moon is a Japanese content. You are listening at novelfull.audio. At night, Arthur usually reads newspapers or magazines. It's not necessary to read, but it's also good to know about various aspects of the current golden flower country in newspapers, magazines, or performance boxes. In the golden flower country, the most widely read newspapers are undoubtedly Moon and Time. No one can say for sure how long these two newspapers were established, but everyone knows that Moon was acquired by a company controlled by the leader of the Ning party, Isabella, and that the successive presidents of Time have close ties to the ancestors of the current leader, Duke Lisa, of the Milk Party. So, you can't just read one of these two newspapers. Moon, the big stupid bridge has not collapsed, today, among the many discussion tips in public telephone booths, many people are spreading a rumor. Big Ben Bridge has collapsed. These rumors claim that around 10 o'clock this morning, one of the traffic lines on the Ben Bridge was suddenly hit by a fully loaded tram with a big hole. The bridge, along with the tram and passengers on board, fell into the river of time, with uncertain fate. As a result, there was a serious traffic jam on the Deben Bridge. Our special correspondent arrived at Deben Bridge at 10.20 a.m. After investigation, it was confirmed that the information spread by the rumor above was false. The Big Ben Bridge has no holes, let alone collapsed. After investigation, it was found that some individuals who were late for work intentionally spread these tips on the phone booth, so that their lateness could escape the company's punishment. This newspaper has clarified this matter and notified the factories of major companies under the Ning Party that all attendance this morning will be calculated according to normal time, and employees who are late will be punished according to regulations. This notice is hereby issued. A thousand hectares of fertile land but unable to feed one person, three questions about the conscience of the Milk Party. Following the gurgling river of time. The mother river of our Big Ben City. The scenery along the way is beautiful. In the Ben City, although there are no high mountains and flowing water, and no shadows of coconut trees, the chimneys growing between the banks are one after another swallowing the breath of civilization towards the blue sky, and below the chimney, elites passing by, holding coffee and their ideals and hopes, run around by the river of time, competing for time. However, such a scene is about to disappear. Just yesterday, the dairy aristocrats led by Duke Lisa, using the reason that the factory drainage on the banks of the Time River had polluted it, affecting the water supply for farms in the downstream suburbs, brazenly led people into the city, sealed off all factory outlets along the Time River, and drove away those who ate, drank, and even walked along the river. This is not the first time a Milk Party member has done such a thing. They always do this, using the excuse of protecting agriculture and food quality, and easily doing things that harm the rights and interests of the people of Jinhua country. It is truly hateful and shameful. Today, this newspaper will ask three questions to the scumbags of the Milk Party. How do you answer, how do you face your conscience, and how do you face the anger of the people of the all-golden flower country? When asked, why are there still people in Jinhua who can't eat enough when the milk party's fertile land stretches for thousands of tilts? 
As is well known, within the territory of Jinhua Kingdom, all farmers and nobles are members of the Milk Party. They have controlled a large amount of land since the Golden Flower State. For thousands of years, regardless of the era, they have controlled the land, food, and even every citizen of the Golden Flower Kingdom. We can't eat enough. Why, whether in ancient times when agricultural and animal husbandry technology was relatively backward, or today when technology has greatly improved and a large number of high-dot-quality and high-dot-yield varieties from overseas have been introduced, so many of our people still cannot eat enough. The most exaggerated situation is that a small potato can be sold for a man's price of one pound. The dairy party keeps saying they want to maintain agricultural and food safety, but what about the result? Is food safe? Have the people eaten enough? Secondly, excessive animal husbandry leads to soil erosion. Has the milk party considered for future generations? The dairy aristocrats, in order to produce more milk and wheat on their farms, resorted to malicious and insidious tactics. In order to kill pests, they can use pesticides that damage water, for watering, they can drain rivers and wells, they even dare to compare themselves to the sky, and once it rains less, they even use cannons to bombard the blue sky in white clouds, saying that this can make the sky rain. May I ask, have they ever considered this for our future generations? Unintentionally demanding from nature and endlessly extracting the sweet juice of Mother Earth, only fattening the milk party nobles, we people of the golden flower country, both now and in the future, cannot enjoy any benefits. Do we still have to sit idly by as the dairy aristocrats recklessly destroy the ecological environment, strangle our future living space, in exchange for their wealth today? Three questions, aggressively blocking public spaces, who owns the Time River? The last question is to ask the milk party aristocrats. The Time River is the mother river of all the foolish cities, and even all the people of the Golden Flower Kingdom. Time River is everyone's mother, dairy aristocrats. Why do you seal the outlet of the river? The Time River belongs to everyone, not to any nobles, let alone any individual. Every Jinhua Chinese has the right to take a walk, eat, and drink coffee by the River of Time. This is the basic right of every person in Jinhua country. Warning once again to the outdated and backward old aristocrats of the Milk Party. Our patience is limited. The operation of the Royal Zoo is dismal, where exactly is the future ahead? The Royal Zoo, located in the center of Big Ben City, has now reached the end of its life. Once upon a time, the Royal Zoo was the business card of Big Ben City. In the past, animals were raised here from all over the Golden Flower Country and even from all over Ecuador. At its peak, visitors from the zoo came like clouds, earning extra profits every year for the Golden Flower King's warehouse. However, now zoos have declined. After the Industrial Revolution, the national strength of Jinhua Country greatly increased, and the income of the citizens increased. Electrical appliances such as soul performers had already flown into the homes of ordinary people. People who live a prosperous life can see many animals in their leisure time through soul performers, without the need to go to the zoo. At the same time, the number and variety of animals in the royal zoo have also begun to decrease. In the past, due to the royal title, Overseas countries would always send many rare and exotic beasts. However, the current King Doria is a kind queen with too much affinity and intimidation. Other countries no longer send animals as they used to, which greatly undermines the appeal of the royal zoo. As a result, the operation of the zoo has been deteriorating day by day. Compared with the thriving Big Ben city, it has become increasingly desolate and decadent, as if it is a ruin staining the shining pearl of Big Ben City. The leader of the Ning Party, Marquis Isabella, who was interviewed by this newspaper, stated that the management philosophy of the Royal Zoo is outdated and urgently needs to be rectified. Her Majesty the Queen should see this clearly and appoint someone with modern business management capabilities to reorganize the zoo as soon as possible, in order to avoid the decline of this former landmark of Big Ben City and also the royal property. Isabella finally said that although she is very busy now, 
the royal zoo is a matter of honor and disgrace for all the golden flower kingdom. As long as Her Majesty gives an order, she can immediately take over the work of the zoo and work hard to revitalize the reputation of the royal zoo and the royal family. 8. Time is a selection of Japanese content. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The Ben Bridge must have been destroyed by Ning Dang's sycophants. The Ben Bridge really fell down today, it's true. At 10 o'clock in the morning, the Ben Bridge, which was stuck in traffic, suddenly exploded with a big hole after a loud noise. According to the informant's report, a sneaky Ning party worker was also on the De Ben Bridge at the time. After seeing this huge hole, he happily jumped back into the car and shouted happily, you can be late. Based on this, we conclude that the Ben Bridge was destroyed by the people of the Ning party. Fortunately, due to the timely action of our milk party knights and nobles, the Big Ben Bridge has been repaired and can continue to be used. The milk produced from the farm can still be transported from the Big Ben Bridge to the city for citizens to enjoy. The milk party will hold the Ning party accountable for the bombing of the Big Ben Bridge in the future. The air pollution index has exceeded the standard for 10 consecutive days, and there is no solution from Ning Party. According to this report, the thunder sweeping mist operation carried out by the Meridian Observatory, with the leader of the Dairy Party, Duke Lisa, serving as honorary chairman, shows that various parts of Big Ben City in Golden Flower Country have been deeply trapped in the dilemma of air pollution and cannot extricate themselves. According to data from the past 10 days, the emissions of pollutants in the atmosphere have seriously exceeded 67% in only Daven City. The emissions of these pollutants are obviously due to the factories operated by the fake aristocrats of the Ning Party. After entering the atmosphere, these emissions are difficult to resolve and can exist in the natural environment for over a hundred years. The situation in Big Ben City is not optimistic, even in other cities and rural farms. Just like in Yangdu, a small place with the largest pasture in the country, recently faced the difficulty of being unable to graze sheep due to the pollution of the river water caused by the city's discharge of a large amount of pollutants, resulting in a large amount of withered grass. You should know that wool trade is an important economic pillar of the country. If there are problems with sheep grazing this year, the owners of the Ning Party's factories must pay the price for it. However, under the premise of the existence of such a reality in Jinhua Kingdom, which is caused by the Ning Party people, the efforts made by the Milk Party to save the ecology of Jinhua country will also be smeared and criticized by the Ning Party. Recently, under the leadership of Lisa, the aristocrats of the Ning Party went to the city of Big Ben to carry out ecological conservation actions on the Time River. The main purpose of this action is to reshape the ecology of the Time River, restore the mother river of every person in our golden flower country, and make it clean, clear, and bright like it was a hundred years ago, or even just fifty years ago. The aristocrats of the Milk Party personally picked up garbage on both sides of the river and blocked the sewage that was almost dumped into the river, maintaining the ecological environment of the Time River. However, such a benevolent act was actually smeared by the members of the Ning Party, who claimed that the Milk Party nobles had infringed upon the right of the people of Jinhua to enjoy the river of time. This is truly reversing the truth and calling a deer a horse. May I ask, if even the most basic river cleaning cannot be done well, and our mother river becomes pitch black. Can we, the people of Jinhua, still walk and drink coffee peacefully by the river? Can we still enjoy the freshwater resources and fish catch that mother river brings us? The Milk Party aristocrats have never infringed upon anyone's right to use the river of time. The true, mother-slaying enemy, is the Ning Party. Since the Industrial Revolution, the aristocrats of the Milk Party have repeatedly reminded everyone to be cautious, careful, and to limit the expansion of the Ning Party factories, be firm, be resolute, and vow to defend the area of dairy farming and ranching, the food quality of Jinhua people, the safety of Jinhua people's dining tables, and every mouth and stomach of Jinhua people. Our Milk Party still remembers our original intention to this day. The detailed analysis of the results of this thunder sweeps the mist will be obtained soon, and we will announce it to the public at that time, and will also propose rectification proposals to Her Majesty the Queen at the same time. 
At that time, we hope that all the people of Jinhua country will join us in defending this hard. Earned Blue Sky of Jinhua Country The Royal Zoo should quickly transform and emerge from the haze The Royal Zoo located in the central area of Big Ben City is facing operational difficulties, and the leader of the Milk Party, Duke Lisa, has expressed close concern about this matter. As is well known, the Royal Zoo used to be the business card of Big Ben City, attracting countless tourists to linger here. The zoo is also a dream playground for many people in their childhood. How many children, how many nights they play coquettish or pout on their mothers and fathers, just to come and play at the Royal Zoo for a day. The zoo is facing operational difficulties now, and the dairy party will definitely help. Firstly, it must be pointed out that the management difficulties and decline of zoos are ultimately caused by the Ning Party. How could the zoo located in the middle of the factories of the Ningdang Party, which discharge exhaust gas and wastewater recklessly in the city of Daban, be independent. Animals in such an environment are all listless and even suffer from serious physiological disorders, eventually falling ill and dying. This kind of zoo has been repeatedly complained about by the Friendship Society, resulting in negative news and irreversible loss of visitors. How can a zoo without tourists continue to operate? To reshape the glory of the Royal Zoo, the zoo must immediately transform its operations. In this regard, the leader of the Dairy Party, Duke Lisa, stated that she absolutely has rich experience in this area and can help the zoo win this comeback battle. Firstly, it is necessary to close and close all the Ningdang factories within a radius of 500 miles around the zoo, and prohibit them from continuing to export toxic substances that pollute the environment. Ensuring the survival of animals is to preserve the most fundamental lifeline of zoos. If we don't destroy the factories of the Ning Party, all other methods will be just tinkering around, and the ultimate result may be nothing but a bamboo basket for water. Secondly, zoos need to change their thinking, accept reality, and begin to transform into breeding economic animals. Once upon a time, the Royal Zoo, as the zoo with the most diverse animal species in the Golden Flower Country, was able to attract countless viewers to visit and admire rare and exotic animals. Now, due to the Queen's own incompetence, she can no longer obtain different types of animals from other countries like her predecessors in previous dynasties, due to the changes in life brought about by modern technology, the people have easily come into contact with different animals from various sources, and the attraction of exotic animals to citizens and tourists is not as great as before. It is impossible for the Royal Zoo to restore its former glory if it continues to stick to its old ways. Change the mode and raise economical animals such as chickens, ducks, geese, pigs, cows, sheep, fish, etc. in the zoo. Firstly, the animals can be sold for recycling costs when they grow up. Secondly, rural tourism can be operated on dot site in the zoo, allowing visitors to experience a one dot stop self dot service experience of feeding pigs, washing pigs, slaughtering pigs, scalding pigs, dividing pigs, boiling pigs, and eating pigs in the zoo. Eat one pig every weekend, get close to nature, and enjoy nature. This new type of tourism and entertainment will undoubtedly save the decline of zoos and reshape their glory. Duke Lisa also heard that there were pseudo-nobles in the Ning party proposing to let Isabella take over the zoo. She joked that if Her Majesty the Queen really did this, it would really be catching a mouse into a rice jar. Industrialization and industrial revolution are the biggest enemies of the royal zoo, and even the golden flower royal family. If you can't see through this point and hand over the zoo as a royal asset to Isabella, then Queen Doria will really become what foreign media call a puppet queen. Finally, Duke Lisa said that she was confident that as long as the royal zoo was handed over to the dairy party, relying on the years of experience accumulated by the many traditional aristocrats of the dairy party in farming, the royal zoo could be preserved. Duke Lisa hopes that the Queen will see reality clearly and not make wrong choices that will make her regret her life. 9. Arthur Descended to the Loyal Zoo You are listening at NovelFull.audio Even if Arthur and Dolly were given ten nights to daydream, they couldn't come up with the idea that their childhood dream park at the Royal Zoo was now mixed with this character. 
On Monday, early in the morning, Arthur and Dolly came to the zoo to take on their new job. Just at the entrance, Arthur saw a thief coming from the zoo. They are not masked, but are confidently transporting door panels, benches, fences, and even small trees out of the door, uprooting them with mud. Wait a moment. Dolly blocked herself in front of those robbers. You guys are so brave. Stealing the royal zoo in broad daylight, do you know that this is Her Majesty's property? Stealing. Who knew, those thieves actually looked at me, I looked at you, and then laughed up in the sky. Ha 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 stealing. The queen still owes us wages. We have sold all these things, but they are not enough to offset them. If you can see the queen, please ask her to settle the debt. After speaking, those thieves still carried things, completely ignoring Arthur and Dolly. And Dolly quickly withdrew with a knowing interest. I am your new principal. Arthur was about to stop those thieves when Dolly held his mouth and pulled him aside. Young master, you're crazy. Dolly whispered and warned Arthur. Those are all old employees of the zoo, can't you tell? It must be because the zoo owed them wages before, and now they just move the goods inside. How could they just move away like this? We must definitely stop it. Don't be foolish, young master. Look clearly, what they are moving now, including tables, chairs, and chairs. Are these things valuable? If they are really thieves, how could they steal such things? No. But it seems quite valuable to us, Arthur scratched his head, showing a poverty trait that a nobleman should not have. Don't be foolish, young master. Dolly gently grabbed Arthur's ear and pulled it to her vermilion lips. According to reason, a maid should never do such a thing to her master. But Dolly is not an ordinary maid, and she doesn't hurt either. Arthur won't blame her. You can't even afford my salary. If these people find out that you are the zoo director and ask for your salary, what will you do? Will you sell me for money? Arthur was speechless, and what Dolly said was completely reasonable. They could only hold on for a while now, hiding aside and watching helplessly as those people moved away the things from the zoo. You two come to the zoo so early, you don't look like tourists. As those people were about to fill a small donkey cart, an old man with gray hair and a tailcoat walked out of the zoo elegantly and slowly. Don't be a thief with ulterior motives, you want to take advantage of this opportunity to get rich. I warn you, although the zoo is hopeless, I won't let you easily succeed. Hey guys, you guys are the thieves. On the contrary, the villain started reporting, right. Arthur thought this way and was about to theorize, but was eventually stopped by the maid Dolly. We just want to come and visit, husband. Isn't the zoo closed? Dolly pretended to be harmless to humans and animals, blinking her big watery eyes. My, okay, I'm not. Such a lovely girl, how could she be? Okay, it was really my negligence. It was just that I didn't consider it. Miss, are you really tourists? Of course it is. I'm sorry, this beautiful lady, the tailcoat continued, bowing slightly. The zoo has run out of animals, not a single one. So far, there haven't even been any employees at work. You can only change your itinerary, sorry. Are you planning to date? I'm really sorry. You must have had great hopes. But please forgive me for not being able to hold on. Your Majesty, please forgive me. Looking at the old tailcoat, I couldn't help but shed tears. Dolly and Arthur didn't say much, so they comforted him with kind words. After communication, I found out that the old tailcoat was the old director of the zoo. He knew that His Majesty the Queen would arrange for a new principal to come today. Before the new principal arrives, his final task is to appease all the old employees and voluntarily leave. After talking for a long time, they finally agreed. We can sell as much as we can for the rest of these things, as severance pay. Forget it. Everyone has been doing it for so long, and we also have feelings. 
The old tailcoat tearfully responded to the call of the thieves from afar and slowly boarded the small donkey cart. Before parting, he still looked back reluctantly. Leaving the zoo, he felt as if he had already died. Now I know what's going on, young master. The zoo is already ruined. Your Majesty the Queen has dug a grave for you instead of a hot potato. This kind of zoo needs to operate for a monthly profit of ten million pounds within three years. Do you have any thoughts now? Can I receive compensation for being fired during the probationary period? Also compensation. Although Dolly and Arthur grew up together, they have never received the same education and face different challenges every day. Therefore, at this time, Dolly is more reliable. Hurry up and find the finance department of the zoo first. Yu Yu can read www.uukangshu.net to see if it's really so hopeless. The finance room of the zoo is not difficult to find. On a piece of empty land with no hair growing, Dolly and Arthur found a low house. This house is obviously the office building of the zoo. After entering, there were few compartments and nothing. There are no desks or chairs, it should be because all the old employees just moved out. If it weren't for the department sign that definitely couldn't be sold on the door of each compartment, Arthur Dolly couldn't tell the difference between this empty room with scattered waste paper and the adjacent propaganda, administration, affairs, and tea room with the same empty waste paper. No, nothing. Dolly picked up the waste paper on the ground, sorted it out, and flipped through them one by one. In fifteen minutes, she had already come to a conclusion. Since last year, there have been no new financial documents, so it should have been difficult to operate since then, Dolly said, feeling tired and wanting to sit for a while, but without a chair. Ten million, ten million, young master. Now let's not talk about ten million, just find a piece of paper to print the preliminary plan that needs to be submitted this week. You don't have the money to buy paper or a typewriter. Dolly spread her hands and looked at Arthur, even the versatile Dolly had no choice. Anyway, we can't resign. We'll have to wait for the Queen to fire us and receive compensation. Arthur gritted his teeth and sat down on the empty ground, realizing that such a reckless start was not without benefits. At the very least, we have nothing to lose, right? That's not necessarily true. I don't know where, but a sharp female voice vetoed Arthur's innocence. She will soon make Arthur and Dolly truly understand that the difficulties they are currently facing are far greater than they imagine. 10. Isabella's Provocation You are listening at NovelFull.audio. This is the first time that Arthur Dolly and her colleagues have met Isabella face to face. Before this, of course, they also knew about the famous Marquis Isabella but they never thought that such a big shot would come knocking on their door at such a time. She is standing at the entrance of the finance room at the Royal Zoo. Isabella is different from other nobles of the Golden Flower Kingdom, as you can tell from her attire. She is dressed in black, with some holes in her body. From the middle of these holes, you can see that her skin is also white, but not the snow.white like Queen Doria, but a pale and bloodless complexion. Besides, there were no other decorations on that black outfit, except for a dark red rose that looked like it was about to wither. Standing at the waist, neither Arthur or Dolly could tell whether it was a real flower or just folded into this shape with red cloth. But what attracts Isabella the most is not these soulless objects. As the saying goes, the eyes are the windows of the soul, and Isabella perfectly interprets this statement. In one of her eye sockets, there were no eyeballs, only an electronic eyeball. I was a bit worried when I heard that Doria didn't give me the position of principal, but as long as Lisa's cow didn't snatch it, it would be easy. Isabella is actually very beautiful, even a little more beautiful than Dolly's maid. But when she dressed like this, combined with the way she spoke, Arthur would only want to take a detour when he saw Isabella. You are the new principal, right? I know you, that idiot who dares not deny her ancestors. Isabella only regarded Arthur as one of the traditional old nobles, and disdain overflowed from that electronic prosthetic eye. I'll tell you, 
Your Majesty the Queen of Doria dug a hole for you and tricked you into killing you, Isabella chuckled a few times before continuing. The little baron suddenly saw the king and felt a bit flattered. He didn't even think it through before accepting this job. I guess you don't even know how much you earn a month's salary, do you? That's it, she got it right. But Arthur was wondering why this guy dared to directly call His Majesty the Queen, Doria. Among the people Arthur usually saw and knew, he had never been like Isabella. You think this zoo has zero assets, but in fact, it has negative assets. You have no idea how much money it still owes outside. When you really become the zoo manager, being harassed by debt collectors every day will be enough for you and your little couple to have a drink. Little couple. There is no one else here, and the little couple Isabella refers to can only be Arthur and Dolly. You misunderstood, she wasn't. Arthur quickly clarified, but he didn't notice that Dolly didn't pay any attention to Isabella saying they were a little couple. On the contrary, Arthur's speed of light refuting rumors made her slightly unhappy. Oh no matter if you're not, come on, let me see, your little cutie, Isabella said as she poked her finger into her electronic eye socket. Isabella's fingernails coated with black nail polish are as long as a full section when rubbed in. If there are normal eyeballs growing there, this poking method will definitely make the crystal burst. But in reality, there was no burst, only a beep and a delicate electronic voice saying, start scanning. Then, Isabella looked up and down at the maid Dolly. As Isabella looked around, a beam of red light shot out of the electronic eye, like the checkout counter in a supermarket, scanning Dolly repeatedly. Oh no, Arthur. Isabella could even call out Arthur's name. You have a big baby. Your little cutie. She's super valuable. Isabella finished speaking, ignoring how cold she was dressed. She immediately became like a stalker and leaned over to Dolly, pulling out a pair of magnifying glasses from nowhere. She looked up and down more carefully, and even couldn't even see enough. She even leaned her nose up and took a deep suction very hard on Dolly's cheek. Value. Dolly is certainly not happy, but what is even more unhappy is Arthur. He pushed Isabella away and winged in front of Dolly, preventing her from approaching again. Don't have any ideas about Dolly. Oh Arthur, you really don't know what kind of big treasure you're carrying. I tell you, as long as you sell her, no matter how much money the zoo owes, you can immediately fill the hole. Shut up. Arthur didn't care if the Marquis Isabella across from him was the leader of the Lemon Party, the richest man of the Golden Flower Country, or a first-dot-class figure who could influence the entire business world of the Golden Flower Country, so he cursed directly. Dolly is mine, no one can think of her, Arthur certainly didn't notice. When he said this, Dolly scanned and just now Arthur clarified that they were not lovers' displeasure. All right, all right, you're not just a little couple. Arthur, you guys, I didn't expect you to be quite cute. In these days, some people still talk about this, let me see you. Isabella said as she poked her electronic eye and looked up and down at Arthur. Oh, what's going on? Isabella frowned and poked the electronic eyeball again. Is it bad? Isabella swept around again in confusion, still looking puzzled. Damn it, there's nothing else everywhere. But why are you? Isabella tossed and turned for a while, seemingly still not getting anything from Arthur, but in the end she smiled with relief. It's a bit interesting, you little cutie. Isabella let out a gurgling laughter again, like a witch lifting a pumpkin lid and stirring a bubbling green snot soup inside. It's a bit interesting, no wonder that guy Doria brought you over from that miscellaneous place. Although I don't fully understand it yet, since Isabella just scanned Dolly and shouted, it's so valuable, I can roughly guess what kind of ghost that electronic eye is. Yes, it's the thing in the supermarket that can display prices by scanning product barcodes. Arthur doesn't know what it should be called. UU reading www.uukangshu.net Dolly is a human being, not a commodity. Please don't do this or say that. Ha ha ha. Hiya hiya hiya. 
Isabella's laughter became even more uncontrollable, tears streaming out of one eye and oil flowing out of the other. Good guy, in the commodity society, you still want to violate the rules, right? Interestingly, Isabella touched Arthur's head and pressed her nose close to him. It's necessary for me to re-examine my plan for the zoo, Mr. Arthur. If you need it, come to me any time. You can find any store in Big Ben City, walk in, and say you want to see Isabella. I'll give orders when I go back, only you can do this. Isabella turned around and prepared to leave the finance room. Sell me the zoo, I can guarantee that you and your little lover will never worry about firewood and rice in their lifetime. Really not, Miss Isabella, you don't have to wait for me anymore. I couldn't have done that. Arthur, who had been confused all day, refused decisively in this moment, which surprised Isabella again. You don't have to make such a quick decision. It's not this problem. The problem is, I can't make a decision at all, Miss Isabella, Arthur said lazily, leaning against the wall with ease. Since you already know my name, you must be clear. Although I am the zoo director, in the end, I am just a worker. Isabella's face instantly showed a sense of impatience and frustration as the conspiracy was exposed. Even if the zoo goes bankrupt, it's none of my business. Arthur smiled and spread out his arm outside the door, making a walk-but-don't-leave posture. If you want to buy a zoo, go find the queen. Why are you looking for me? Isabella didn't even finish listening to her, so she angrily left without looking back.